Hi, everybody. My name is Eugene Rojavsky, and this is Talk with a Fancy Name, a dance floor that has literally just been in appeals, AppSec Awareness Program pitfalls. Uh, I'm currently AppSec researcher at Checkmarks. Before that, I was a lead security engineer at a big enterprise in fintech. Overall, nine years, I'm making the world a more secure place. Uh, currently at Checkmarks, I'm responsible for its uh, awareness program and uh, training product called Code Bashing. But uh, I promise you not to sell you anything today and not to be a marketing pitch. I will be as objective and, and unbiased as I can. So let's begin. Uh, this talk is relevant for you uh, if you either want to roll out an AppSec awareness program or you're in the middle of implementing the program and you feel you are stuck or you have some problems. And it also fits you if you manage people who are responsible for AppSec awareness program. Uh, to start with, AppSec program in general is very broad and covers a lot of aspects. There's a lot of data in the internet about how to secure your DevOps, how to secure a cloud, uh, how to inject security tools into CI, CD, and many more technical things you can do. Each part is very important, but I think that awareness, that awareness program, when it's done right, it's a key to other AppSec program aspects. It will allow you to enhance and speed up the adoption of other aspects of AppSec program by dragging developers and management to your side so you are allies with them instead of them constantly resisting whatever you do. Uh, everybody would tell you uh, that you need to raise awareness, but nobody tells you how. So today I will try to answer the question how to raise it uh, but I don't want to throw at you things that you probably will hear at marketing pitches and that salesmen will tell you how to succeed. No, on the contrary, I want to share my story uh, about the mistakes I made while implementing an AppSec awareness program. Uh, I've gathered my experience and the community knowledge. So now I can point out the pitfalls and the things that are usually done incorrectly that are problematic and that you are probably going to get into if you are implementing the AppSec Awareness Program. And the first thing you can do is actually get stuck without even starting. Uh, for example, when I've started, I got a task to roll out AppSec Program. I've decided to start with awareness program. Uh, I've opened uh, YouTube, watched a lot of talks, so talked to some vendors, uh, read a lot of articles. There's a lot of information about it, but a very few solutions. Uh, I've made a description for awareness program. Uh, could you cut it? That, it, that is bad. The way that I've defined the awareness program is you need to A, give a solid knowledge base for developers in AppSec and B, which is uh, as important as the first point, you need to raise development engagement in all AppSec activities. And a good place to start is OWASP SAM. Thanks to the project lead, Seb and Bart, who made a huge work to help us with rolling out AppSec programs. So OWASP SAM has several maturity levels uh, in each AppSec program aspect. Uh, you can start with the first maturity level of training and awareness that tells you to give the basic knowledge uh, for everybody who is involved into development. Another OWASP project that will help you to do that is OWASP Top 10. So you can take Top 10, give it to your developers as the basic knowledge, but what would happen if you just take the Top 10 blindly and give it to everybody? You would get 
into a pitfall of not knowing your audience. For example, if you teach the developers, the hardcore CPP developers who write embedded code and you teach them XSS, that's totally not relevant. Or on the contrary, if you give front-end developers descriptions of all kinds of memory overflows and issues. More than that, if you are teaching seasoned developers the very basics, let's say, of SQL injections, then it won't be relevant to them. One more thing that I've uh, encountered on my own experience is that uh, you need to understand that giving courses in English for non-English native speakers may be a problem. Even if you are a good English speaker, that may be a problem for some of the developers. And if it is, then overall the development management won't agree to take the course in English because some of the people just cannot take it. So irrelevant training material leads to resistance from the trainees. And what can you do with that is first, you can uh, make a list of relevant technologies uh, to give your trainees the relevant material. Meaning uh, you just pick up the frameworks, the languages, everything that they use, and then put it into the training material. The second thing, uh, you should speak the same language with them. Meaning AppSec engineers should be proficient with programming to the point where developers treat them as equals. And when AppSec engineers can understand whatever the developer tells and not just nod and say, yeah, okay, that's a solution. No, you must understand what you're talking uh, about with developers. Next thing, you need to assess the overall knowledge and get the picture of the AppSec state. Uh, usually when the uh, company culture, the company's AppSec posture is very immature, then it's pretty clear that the over level is very basic but it actually may vary from team to team. Let's say you have a team that came from a different company that have great uh, AppSec expertise and actually this team knows AppSec, but you are going to teach them the very basics. How can you understand that? Uh, how can you assess the overall level? You can give questionnaires, like short ones, easy ones, or you can talk to development managers to get the overall knowledge of the team. And the last thing that you need to do is to measure the initial point. That is actually the thing that I didn't do while implementing my program. And it was very hard to track progress uh, in a year, let's say. So you need to choose the exact metrics that are aligned with your AppSec programs. There's a lot of metrics in the internet, you need to find the fitting. Uh, I won't tell you exact ones right now, you need to choose yourself. Uh, after you know what you need, you even may have a short list of vendor products. Uh, you come to management to get the budget. And unexpectedly, what you get in response is that whatever you suggest is too expensive and you need to do it yourself. This is exactly what happened to me. I will explain uh, in a few slides why it happened, why you don't get automatic management buy-in uh, when you come and ask for budget. But now let's focus on buying and making the in-house program. Let's take a look at pros and cons of each uh, approach. First of all, both of them are good and both of them are viable and they do the job in, depending on the case, depending on your goal. I'm not saying that if you buy something, it will be way better than you can develop in-house. No, totally not. Second thing, both of them require AppSec specialist, uh, at least on the rollout stage. It doesn't matter if you buy it or you create one, you need to roll it out and you need an AppSec 
a specialist who will spend a lot of time making sure that everybody uh, did whatever you suggested in the program. Of course, in-house training requires a lot more time because uh, you need a highly paid AppSec person to create something first. So the main point I want to stress here is that the choice between uh, in-house and vendor-based program should be objective. You, it shouldn't be driven by lack of budget and the attitude of management that doesn't want to give you money. But in my case, as I've said, it was not an issue and I didn't get the budget. Uh, so let's take a look why. There are two main reasons, two main mindsets of management that doesn't allow you to do that, to get the budget. First of all, security is a job of the security team. I bet most of you heard that at least once from management. And the second thing is that security team only spends money and earns nothing. So having management with this approach, with this mindset, will lead to two problems. First of all, you won't get a fancy budget for your tools and team. And the second, uh, developers won't help you with the AppSec activities. In my case, I had this structure. Uh, the AppSec team was, and the development team were under CDO who had some senior management and we got the task to implement the AppSec program, but we didn't have support from senior management who were ready to buy in and support us budget-wise. And also we didn't have support of the development team who just sabotaged whatever we did. But there's a worse case. When AppSec team is under a different uh, C-level manager than the development team, then you need to uh, convince even more people. So to fix that, first of all, you need to get sponsorship of higher management. There are several ways uh, how you can do it. You need to show the importance of AppSec to them. Uh, you can do it by showing the risk assessment because risk assessment ends up with numbers, with money. So this is convincing enough when you show that company can lose this amount of money and uh, AppSec program cost less. It would work perfectly especially after the pen test that shows that it's trivial to just smash the whole company, steal whatever you have, and it's cheaper to implement the AppSec program than being hacked. Uh, and another approach, uh, which has its own pros and cons that I will talk a bit later, is uh, getting the support through compliance requirements. Let's say you have industrial or PCI DSS or any kind of uh, compliance requirements that you need to comply with. So you can leverage that and get the support from management. But you gotta be careful with that and I will show you a bit later why. But getting uh, support from management is not enough. Uh, the second part of it, you need to get the support from the development team. Ideally, of course, you need to make the security a part of their job, but it actually is a topic of a separate talk or even several talks because it's very hard to make. And if you can manage that, well, your doors are open for pretty much any company that you like. Um, an alternative way is to interest developers, thus engaging them into AppSec activities. Developers are curious by nature and when you show them something that is security related, but also is relevant to development, they dig into it. They 
try to understand both the security and from security and development perspective, and they actually help you with that. They kind of do your job. So to conclude, you need to have support on all the levels, on the management level and the development team level. Uh, but to be honest, when you have high budgets, a lot of experts in your team, development team supporting you, exist only in the world of unicorns. And another pitfall that you probably will get into is that you have not enough resources, so you don't have enough time for training because the AppSec team has other priorities. Usually, security teams are understaffed and the rate of AppSec experts to developers is 1 to 100, and it doesn't change in time. So when the priorities and efforts of the AppSec team are dispersed between different tasks, uh, likely awareness program uh, won't, uh, will be harmed and rolling it out will take a lot of time or even it may not happen. So what you should understand approaching the uh, approaching AppSec awareness program is that it takes time. Uh, both in-house and vendor base, it doesn't matter, they require a lot of time from AppSec people. Moreover, it requires a person who owns it because without an owner who is responsible for making sure that the awareness program happens, who has enough authority, enough skills, uh, your program won't happen. But even if you invest enough effort in, and people and time into the program, there is still a way to fail. If you make your trainees read long texts or watch long videos, you're likely to fail because AppSec experts who are responsible for awareness program are likely are not experts in e-learning, in making the effective, engaging e-learning courses. And if the learning material is boring, is just walls of text, it's a long video without any hand-on activity, then probably you will bore your trainees to death. And this will resist uh, in active resistance from the developers to any AppSec activity, because from that point, the AppSec team will be perceived as people who waste time and ask for things that are boring and not interesting. You even can write an excellent description of vulnerabilities or give developers videos that are interesting, but without uh, the engaging part, without hand-on part, it won't be enough. So what you need to do is to engage developers by, for example, hands-on activities, some competition, interactive learning material, and so on. So let's take a look at several examples. CDFs work for developers. CDFs are not things for AppSec professionals, but I'm talking about the basic level of CDF. You can take uh, the basic vulnerable app like Juice Shop or OS Go, something relevant for the technological stack that you're using, add a free CDF platform like the one Facebook provides. Uh, then you can add beers and some swag for the winners. You create a tournament, you create a competition, you make sure that everybody uh, are equal. If you break people, for example, in the teams, that let's say you don't have uh, a seasoned team against juniors, it won't be fair. So juniors will be very sad after that. So make sure that it's healthy competition and it will work. People will be engaged and will uh, participate in it gladly. Moreover, there are some, a few, but still there are uh, some free gamified learning platforms. 
I'm saying word gamification here because it's not only something that AppSec awareness program vendors will sell you. It's also the top-notch approach for e-learning. That's why everybody is trying to use it and it really works. And the last thing you can show to your trainees is a vulnerable app. There are a bunch of them online that don't require uh, rolling out virtual machines or something like that. Let's say you can uh, give the link to hack yourself first or uh, more specific issues like shown in XSS game. Uh, the most interested developers will open it and actually click through it and try to hack something. Developers are eager to hack things with some guidance. But even if you do all these activities once a year, it's not good enough. The effect of the training, the effect of whatever you did will quickly fade out, uh, but uh, having it yearly is good only in a single case. It's good for a compliance-driven training, uh, as I've mentioned before, and coming back to compliance-driven uh, awareness and training program. So once a year, you can uh, ask everybody to take a course, put check marks as in the list, show it to the auditor, and you're good. But uh, it's, it's a bad approach, giving it once or twice a year, it's a better approach for a mature AppSec program. It won't work. Uh, moreover, a yearly program has one more pitfall. Uh, you need to consider the turnover and the team growth that decreases the training coverage in time. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have 100 trainees and somehow you manage to train the 100% of them. But in a year, let's say 25 people quit and they are replaced with 25 new people. And also there are 25 new positions. So in the end of the year, you have 125 trainees, but only 60 of them are trained. Also, I'm not considering that knowledge fades out. And I bet that the major part of them won't even remember the course the training that they took a year ago. So instead of going yearly, you need to remind developers about AppSec existence gently and continuously. You can do it, uh, as I've mentioned, by organizing CDFs and other, let's say, code reviews, something that is challenging, interesting, and has competition in. Uh, other than that, you can give internal AppSec talks to developers. Uh, for example, you can participate in the internal meetups, guild meetings, whatever you have in the company. Moreover, you can uh, create an AppSec uh, mailing that just points out the most interesting things happened in AppSec world that are related to things happening inside of the company. Next, you can show the vulnerabilities that you found in the company's products. Developers usually think that other developers make vulnerable code and they are flawless and they're good. But if you show them that they are people and they make mistakes, they will be very engaged into writing the secure, secure code next time. And instead of writing code and thinking, oh, okay, I hope it's not vulnerable, they will come to you and ask your guidance. And this is exactly what you want from the developers. And the last thing, you can provide learning material that is relevant to the current developer's tasks. Meaning, let's say the development team has uh, develops management fun user management functionality, then you can give them relevant material how to avoid user enumeration for login and password restoration functionality 
and you can give some advice on storing the passwords. So be relevant and developers will come to you next asking your guidance. And finally, a yearly program is good only for passing the audit. When it's compliance driven, that's okay. Speaking of which, uh, when compliance is the only driver, uh, the AppSec awareness program likely won't be effective. Not only the points that I've mentioned before about the yearly training, but also employees who are forced to take the training will perceive it as torture and the attitude towards the AppSec and sec or security team will become negative. Let's take a look at pros and cons of the compliance driven program. As I've mentioned, uh, it mostly fits for passing the audit, but uh, if you manage to leverage the compliance-driven program that will give you the completion rate of 100% and engage developers, give them something interesting, uh, it's a good head start for other AppSec activities. So if you use it to give other activities, not only a yearly training, but engage developers and do things that I've already said, it's a good thing. But you need to be careful with the compliance driven program because you may get into the swamp of giving developers the same thing every year. And one more pitfall that is relevant for the compliance driven training is when AppSec awareness program or AppSec training is done as a project with an end. Uh, I mean, I've put training here because training is something that you take and it's done. Awareness is a process. So when you have a project that ends and you just stop all the activities that are related to uh, awareness program, you will fail because at least you will give people the same thing every year and the second time they take the training, they will hate you and they will sabotage everything that the uh, AppSec team does. And by the way, this is a very likely scenario when the training department is in charge of the task. So you need to make sure that AppSec team is participating in the task because the training team cannot fit it, cannot complete it a good way. So what you should do, you should have a process as the end result of the project of implementing the awareness program. Uh, the process should have its owner, a person who will be responsible for everything happening to uh, awareness, uh, driving it forward. Also, you need to track progress. Uh, remember, I told you that you need to measure your initial state. If you do it, then you can track progress. You, need, you can understand uh, what you are doing and you can show it to management to prove that you're doing something. You're not just wasting money. Next thing, you need to constantly update and, um, and upgrade whatever you show to the developers. Showing the same thing several times and do it every year doesn't work. You need to show something interesting, something new. And if uh, you manage to give them the basics, give developers the basics, you can go into slightly more complex things that are more AppSec related like uh, threat modeling or risk assessment and developers actually can help you with that. So let's go back to OWASP SAM and take a look at the next steps, next maturity levels of it. After you've covered the basics and found the security champions in the development teams, you can go into the framework specifics, the language specifics, uh, try to involve developers in the security activities 
teach the most uh, willing of them the, the absurd things like risk assessment and threat modeling. And one more important thing that you need to do is measure uh, your success and measure what you do, measure your progress. It's even uh, one of the uh, practices that OWASP SAM shows, like measuring your uh, AppSec program. It also has several maturity levels. There's a lot of what you can do after you give uh, some training to developers and your main goal is not to stop. So that's it and let's wrap up with uh, pointing the things that, that you can take away from the stock. First, you need to get the necessary support from management and development. Getting the support that you need, you can allocate enough people and time and priorities into the task so you can make it continuous, you can devote it enough time to engage and interest developers into the AppSec activities. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Here's my Twitter in case you need to tell me something.